D. Great to see you in Korea. Great to see you too. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're with your son Mark and uh, good friend um, uh, uh, Chan Hong. John, John Hong. Yeah, there we go. And uh, we're just going to have a lunch. Yeah. Um, D just asked about the today's the fourth of February. So it's um, it's the what I'm calling the 35th day in 100 days to harvest. I'm exploring this project between looking at the project friendship tree, which is exploring the friendship between Australia and Korea. And you asked, is there a, any relevance in the 100 days to harvest in terms of Korean culture? Um, not yes and no. So um, uh, it's 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 arbitrary. Like the 100 days is just a amount of time. And I, I think it's a good amount of time to allow this story to be explored. Uh, but in, in Korean culture, when a baby's born, in the old days, they, they didn't name the baby until after 100 days because of the high risk of, of uh, mortality. So they have a, at 100 days, they have this, this, um, this uh, special thing uh, of a ceremony here where they take it, uh, the baby out and, like, it's almost not the same as a christening, but the same sort of big deal uh, that some some families have in Australia, and the harvest is really just harvesting the metaphor of the friendship tree, uh, it coming into fruition. But that also points to a festival of harvest, which is later in the year, uh, on the 15th of uh, August, by the lunar calendar. So this year, I think it will be in the uh, be in uh, September. Chusok will be in September. Probably. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of the, the thing, but um, look, I, I was I was really wanting to, um, looking forward to seeing you today. Um, how have you found Korea? It's been beautiful, yeah. really, really cool. What's the, what's the standout, what's the standout memory for you? It's so much cooler here than Australia at the moment. <laughs> it's a lot cooler. Uh, what, what was the lowest degree, what was the lowest temperature it got to? Uh, minus 12. Minus 12. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good seeing though I was suffering uh, 40s back home, not yeah. rubbing it in. Yeah. Yeah. But a member from Korea is the technology. Yeah. Is everywhere. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like this, this, this table over here. The, uh, these, you can see the people just um, on their computers. In fact, in fact, all those three, those three tables at the back uh, are people studying. Uh, it's uh, Saturday afternoon in Gangnam, and uh, everyone's study. But um, I was I was actually wanting to ask ask you a question, um, and maybe Mark as well. Um, so I'm doing this project. It looks called Friendship Tree to try and capture the essence of friendship between Australia and Korea. And uh, part of that is it's going to be delivered using augmented reality uh, on a postcard. Um, Principally to, um, to to schools, so um, uh, school students like exchange between Australia and Korean schools will be the largely the audience, and uh, there'll be there'll be a number of stories that I'm that I'm telling in, about the beginning of the friendship. But in doing so, I also want to capture um, different to this 100, 100 days of harvest, but 100 stories of friendship that that are. That are just, just um, that capture maybe the what what is what is what is the experience like between Australia and Korea today. So I, I'm I'm just interested in capturing your thoughts about how I might how I might solicit those friendships, uh, what they might be, how they might how I might present them. Mark, you might you might have you, you, you've been you've been in Korea for a while now, and if you're doing it between school students, I think the easiest way would be finding the school that you have connections with back home in Australia. Yeah, and then finding a school that you can either get a connection to or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you know what age group of students you want to do that with? Or? Yeah, I think I think from primary through to university, really. Um, and like, but the the one hundred the one hundred um, stories of friendship. They, they won't necessarily be from the schools. In fact, probably, probably not from the schools because I, my preference wouldn't be to be um, covering stories of people under the age of 16 or 18 for obvious reasons. But, um, um, but just like, like, like yourself, for argument's sake, how would, how, would you, how would you describe your friendship with Korea? Like, what, what would that look like? 
thought of it. Head front. Just an ongoing yeah. thing. Um, yeah. Most of my friends I met at university that were coming here, not as exchange students. I'm just going to change hands. Yeah. Not as exchange students, but rather they were coming here as um, people that wanted to just study overseas, I guess. Yeah. So a lot of those people would then. Um, they come back to Korea, or some of them are actually still in Australia working. Yeah. So I think that um, just finding those types of people, there are hundreds of people that go to Australia on a working holiday every year, and they either live with Australians or work with Australians. They interact with Australians on a daily basis, and then a lot of the people that I talk to, like um, John out here, who went to Australia maybe on a holiday or a working holiday, made a bunch of friends. And they come back to Korea and get back into their regular life cycle and they always talk about Australia and how great it was and things like that. So I think it would be something of getting those types of memories from the Koreans. Yeah. And then when you look at Australia, there are so many young Australians, especially in places like Sydney, who are getting into things like K-pop and so they have the same connections of, they understand like, I guess, the artificial or the the outer shell of Korea rather than actually understanding what Korea is. Yeah, sure. And it's, I guess it'll be explaining what it actually is to those people. Yeah. Like showing them the inner workings or the yeah. actual things behind the culture rather than just what looks good on TV and what sells out. Right, like that. right. Getting them more, intri- uh, more involved in the culture rather than just yeah. being serious. I, I think much like a sort of, almost like a kaleidoscope of experience, bringing the 100 stories together. Um, Far from being random, uh, there'll be exactly those things to talk about. So there'll be people who have a fascination with K-pop, or someone who visited Australia and has fond memories. Uh, someone's worked a year in Korea. Uh, someone someone travelled to Korea, liked the food, or and and through through the crop, the, the aggregation of those, I think. Um, We'll piece together this, this tapestry that's, that sort of tells a t- the sum of all of them tells a story that the individual well, can't. The can't Korean own. like philosophy behind these types of things yeah. is that even in a line of rope or even in a tapestry, every single thread is a different. It's a symbol of time and it's a symbol of stories being interconnected. So I think using the phrasing of a tapestry right there, right. it's actually quite significant, maybe more than you realise. That's but right. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. It's the idea that. Yeah. All kind of timelines, all kind of stories are all intertwined and have yeah. a special significance. So, yeah. that, that's really beautiful you say that. Um, down in uh, down in Busan um, last October, um, the Minister of Defence, Minister of Veterans Affairs, came across and presented the tapestry, which uh, a lady called Alwyn Green made with a number of other ladies, and it's um, it's a memorial uh, tapestry that is sewn so into it, the names of all the uh, killed in action here in the Korean War. And uh, I don't think that that significance of the, of the tapestry, uh, it really captures the beauty of that tapestry in a way that the people who made it, I don't think, realised at the time. So uh, that's, thanks for that. Yeah. But um, D, great to, great you could, uh, I'll, I'll come around, sorry, you don't have to turn your neck. Great you could, uh, great, great to see you in Korea. And uh, great to hear your your um, your, uh, your your thoughts. And and Mark, uh, lovely to lovely to meet you too. And yeah, thanks, thanks for your input. Yeah. So more soon. And uh, if you've got stories or if you've got ways we can maybe contribute to this project, share them, please. Okay, thanks. Okay, see you back in Oz. Yeah. <laughs>